welcome to Heart to Heart, where we chat with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. My name is Jeanette Stevens, and I am an admin from East Lansing, Michigan. And today I'm joined by... Marg Stark. I'm an admin from Southern California. So it's Marg and I today, but we also have some special guests, which we're really excited about. Uh, of course, we have to start with our showrunner who's here every week and we when we play where in the world is john tinker so <laughs> welcome john how are you today hi good afternoon i am on the back side of the ronda rosa oh nice oh yeah looking, looking gorgeous there is it that green right now no that's that's a an old photo <laughs> all right gotcha well today we also have a guest joining us today we decided to bring a guest hardy on and some of you who've been around a while will know her, but she's one of our OG Hardy admins, and we're so excited to have you. Welcome, Camille. Hi, I'm Camille Eide. I'm from Sandy, Oregon, which is near Portland, but not too close. So we're so excited to have you. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, and we're definitely going to get to some of the Hardy's questions. But before we do, we wanted to do a little reminiscing with you, if that's all right. Um, last night was the Oscars, and yeah. for, some, for some of you Hardys who've been around a while, there's an infamous story about an Oscar night, what is it, nine years ago now? I think? Yes. Yes, and so it kind of is, a, there's a great story about Oscar night and how the Hardys got started, so we'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that. Okay, a little bit. Um, that's a challenge. So uh, when, when Calls the Heart first started, you know, um, there were just a handful of people, I think on Twitter, trying to talk about it. There was a hashtag, a few of us found each other. We found actually cast members too. Uh, Daniel Listing was tweeting with us, Brian Bird and some Hallmark people. And um, we were just loving this interaction and loving the show. And um, I think it was around episode eight, I think right after that, and that was Oscar night. Um, there was a preview for the next episode and someone put together this really intriguing teaser and it had like a voiceover of Jack asking for Elizabeth's hand and we were freaking out. We were like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? And so a bunch of us were just interacting, talking back and forth, literally for hours, dissecting this one voiceover line, right? And so um after a while we realized okay we can't keep like exploding the twitter verse here we need to take this someplace where we can have more conversation and so we started a facebook group and, and grabbed a few of the other people that we'd been talking with and brian um, who was a great sport and you know continue the conversations there and by the next week's episode i think we had a thousand members wow. already so that told us wow um people love this show and really want to talk about it, really want to dig into it. So um, that took off. And then uh, we found out pretty soon that Hallmark had not guaranteed, you know, a renewal of the season. Like what, <laughs> you know, what do we need to do about this? So um, we began launching a campaign to spread the word, to write to Hallmark, to um, talk, to the sponsors on Twitter, let them know that we're paying attention. Um, we were teaching grandmas how to use Twitter and we were just getting the word out as best we could. And um, that I think by the end of the season, there were 4,000 fans in the, in the Facebook group. So uh, we were off and running, but we were still waiting <clears throat> for Hallmark to give us, you know, the, the next season. And that was an excruciating wait, but eventually they, they finally um, renewed. And so that payoff was really huge. And I think it really took that little bit of momentum that we had and just launched it into space. And, and the evangelism that Brian would say uh, took off from there. So that was our More beginning. More excruciating than the wait between seasons nine and 10? Oh, we don't have to wait for that, do we? But here's the, the past is prologue. We're waiting. Waiting. But hoping. Wait, so Hardys are, Hardys are showing up because of everything you did, Camille, to start us off. Well, thank you. It was, it's great. Wow. It's why we're here. Well, I'm well, honored to be part of this because I think it's great that um, we've been included in this 
in this whole thing in this family. So it's pretty amazing. Well, and I love hearing that story because there's so many hardies, you know, you said a thousand in the first week and the Facebook group is what 86,000 and 89.1 yeah, <laughs> Instagram oh, page okay. now. And yeah. so I'm sure there are thousands of people who have never really heard how this all started. And um, Mark, give out your address. We'll come over to your house. We'll all come over to your house. Party, party. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, had you ever heard that story about? I'd never heard that story. I never heard those numbers. And and thank you again for everyone who participated and who continues to participate. And it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, um, for those of you who don't know, Camille is also an author. And so I think I'm the only one here today who has not written a stitch of words, but everybody oh. else. <laughs> so we're in our own little writer's room, which is so very cool. Uh, so Camille, why don't we dive into the episode and would love to hear, um, did you have a favorite scene from last night's episode? I did actually, and that's hard because there was so much to love about last night's episode. You know, Lucas and little Jack was so cute. and. Um, Elizabeth standing up to Mr. Landis was really great. And um, I'm really getting a big kick out of Mayor Hickam this season. But um, really what struck me and re really stuck with me last night was a really small nugget of gold, which was um, seen when Joseph and Minnie, I think they were sitting over dinner and um, Minnie said to Joseph, you know, you were right. Um, what's important is now. And Joseph said, um, you can't change the past. Let's work on and focus on building our future. And that was, um, that really struck me because that's so moving. And I love what the team and the cast are doing to be part of a conversation that's um, so important. And in fact, that family is, um, I don't know how you guys pack all of this into 42 minutes really, but that family is just exemplifying this grace and this courage and the kind of love that it's gonna to take to keep this conversation going. So um, I really commend your team for that. Well, thank you. Uh, we love that family. And if you liked the last night, that's, that's just a little bit of what's going to happen next week. That's what well, I'm really looking forward to, so. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. So John, so John did, did you have a favorite? Well, I, I had three funny moments. I mean, I thought Pascal did a great job speaking pig Latin and it's not <laughs> easy to do. And it's certainly not easy to do at the speed at which she, she spake it. Uh, I, I thought that was fun. Um, I also like the, uh, the scene on the porch after Lucas has had the phone installed. Um, I, I, I like the way they just talked about it. It wasn't an argument at all. I no. like the fact that Lucas was respectful of the fact that that's her home yeah. and that he should have asked and that it was resolved easily. And I also liked, um, I, I really liked the last scene when out of the blue, Carson calls Faith. Unfortunately, and you guys can, can tell me, I lost all of the audio, which is a rarity. Our, our post team led by Heather Nevin does this fantastic job. But I, I lost her as soon as she went in and I couldn't hear her. And the conversation should have uh, been a, a, a little muffled, but you should have gotten a sense of what the conversation was and her oh. tone. Um, but, but I liked that. And, and it just was sort of a, a restoration of some peace in the Valley there at the end of the show. Well, I, I think she, I think we just got sort of a glee in her kicking the door closed and we knew it was Carson so but that scene right before it was also really gorgeous too with uh Johanna and Andrea that you know mm -hmm. kind of all the single ladies talk it was really um I don't know it was very it was very sweet very well done so oh, good well, yeah, we're glad yeah. You like that. going back to Lucas and to little Jack um mm -hmm. Monica Volkner from Ontario wanted to know if there was a reason that he was reading Robin Hood. There is, are it lots of reasons. is it an allegory for something that's going on? In yeah, the Valley? allegory, I'm going to stay away from, though it does have, a, it has a specific meaning for me and it may have specific meanings for the other writers and for other people. Um, 
but there are a lot of uh, the two most easily explained away reasons are one that it was one of his favorite books when Lucas was a child. Mm -hmm. And it also, um, you know, it talks a little bit about, you know, tyranny and injustice. And you can mm -hmm. see that with Walden coming in. So yeah. we chose that for that reason too. And, and the other reason I like it is, you know, for all of those naysayers or doubters, I don't know what more Lucas can do to prove himself that he would read the book about, you know, that he would read Robin Hood to little Jack should say something about his character. So those are, those are the reasons. Right. The trappings of wealth are, are not what he's about. He's really about He's a, caring he, for others and caring for the town, et cetera. So very cool. Love it. Um, well, we sure were jolted out of our seats. We get this, these amazing sort of porch kisses and then boom, <laughs> he takes a punch in the middle of, uh, of the street. So was that a stunt double or? And can he take they... a punch? You know what? I, I meant to, I spoke to Peter DeLuise today and I apologize. I, I meant to ask him, about that even it, it was Shabon Devine's show and she did a great job, but I meant to ask Peter, I, I wasn't able to reach Shabon. Um, I, I, well, I know- a little about how- I know Chris wanted to do the stunt. I know oh, that he really? wanted okay. to do it. And, yeah, it'd and be great to know. there was any way at all for him to do it without endangering himself or someone else, I'm sure he did it. Well, tell us how typically a fight like that would be choreographed, what would go into that? You're right. We would get we would get a stunt person to come in, um, and and at the appropriate uh, editing point, switch them out and shoot the same action. It would lay a mat on the ground on which the the Lucas stunt double would fall. We would have someone come out of the dark. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say I think he did. I think okay. that I think Chris did it. Um, you can weigh in when we post this and say, it I wasn't, now know. It wasn't a terribly involved stunt. And I'm sure right. that was the reason he, he said, I can do this stunt. Okay, gotcha. But, okay, but cool. Good okay. to knock him around now and again. Not some sexy. <laughs> Usually I humble. watch. Yeah, right. Usually I watch by myself, but last night my mother was over and it certainly got a gasp in our household. Here. Oh, it did? <laughs> yes, oh, yes, good. yes. So I'm sure that echoed the gasps of Hardys all around the country. Yeah. When there were happened. some gasps, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Good. Well, um, John, shifting gears a little bit, I kind of love this question from a Brittany Pepper of Punta Gorda, Florida. Um, she says, I love this. She's picking up on a vibe between uh, Faith, May, and Nathan. Uh, she wants to know, does Faith disapprove of May and Nathan, or is there something else going on there? That's good vibing. Um, you know, at, at the we knew we had some ideas in the writers' room what we wanted to do with May and Nathan, um, and and as the stories began to play out, um, not dissimilar from how a how a character or an act an actual person might respond, knowing a little more than Nathan does about May and seeing what's unfolding. Right now, Faith's unsure how she feels. And, and, and even May and Nathan are a little unsure though, a little more uh, on tech, uh, you know, when it comes to each other. But, but Faith, it's going to be interesting and watch Faith this, this season. Um, not only Faith and her reaction to this, but as I said earlier in a couple of these, Andrea just does a fantastic job this season. And mm -hmm. uh, she has a lot to do. But but that's 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 right. That she's not sure where she is in all of this. Yeah, right now it seems like a lot of um, side glances and looks between. It, it three will and unfold it, and hopefully in a satisfactory way. But it 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 will unfold. It will continue evolving. Great. Yeah, we look forward to that. Good. Um, so we have to talk about one of our favorite scenes from last night, where mm -hmm. some pig Latin was spoken by the lovely Pascal as Rosemary uh, with Lucas. Christine Palermo from Houston, Texas wants to know exactly how many takes did that take to get that right? <laughs> She's, they all, all of our actors come to the set prepared, but, but Pascal can take it to another level and it, it didn't take long at all. And it's hard, it's, it's really hard, as I said a, a little bit ago, it's, it's hard to do and she does it so quickly, but uh, not, not many takes at all. 
Yeah, I did see a response. It's when you have to do it over and over again, and then and somehow it then begins to unravel. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, she mentioned someone asked on Twitter too, and I think she addressed it. And she's like, I was prepared, ready to go. She's always prepared. And 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 they're prepared to the point where they know in any given scene they have a they have a take on that scene, but they also they've not only they're they're so good at their craft they come into those scenes knowing those characters so well that they're ready to make adjustments so even though she'll come prepared she can turn on a dime as as can all of the actors in the show wow. um, i'm fascinated by the both the long and the short arcs um, that your team has been you know cultivating throughout the whole series and they're fascinating to watch. Um, one of my favorites is um, Rosemary, actually. And she revealed her longing for a child um, several seasons ago. And we've all mourned with her. And um, as much as we have, um, I'm really glad that the writers didn't resolve that in just a couple of episodes or even a couple of seasons. Because, um, you know, the reality of life is that we don't always get those deep desires of our hearts. And um, so, um, you know, we've, some of us have accepted that those desires aren't maybe meant to be for us, the side of heaven. And I'm watching Rosemary and watching her actually grow and, and bloom and blossom. And so I guess one of my questions is um, for people who are watching the show, who maybe battle something similar, uh, who might need some encouragement to, um, maybe could you share your thoughts on how Rosemary has, how and why she's actually bloomed and become stronger instead of being bitter or depressed about this. And my question for you is what is your ultimate wish for Rosemary? That's a lot to do. First of all, um, I'm, I'm jealous of folks like you, Camille, and, and my wife, who is also a writer, though she's only written a novel, <clears throat> where you, um, you can really take a deep dive and explore and take your time. And I think audiences, as evidenced by things like binging TV shows, rather than being able to turn a page and maybe stay up a few more hours and read as far ahead as they're able to, in this show, you have to wait and you get 12 episodes and in between yeah. it, I think it fosters a bit of impatience, yeah. justifiable or not, but it, it, it right. I'm a little impatience and, and, and as, as you all know, as writers, you want to take your time telling a story to explore it as mm -hmm. intimately and to the, the degree you, you're hoping to. And, and, and it's in part why we have other writers and not just one writer in the room so that we can all get different takes on, on a character or a situation. Um, Camille, I think what you said about blooming where you're planted is, is exactly sort of the question and the answer. And it's, yeah. a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little more difficult and it's not quite so facile as being able to just bloom where you're planted. But in Rosemary's particular case, I, th I think, um, she finds her peace and her her um, comfort in friendships. Mm -hmm. She's she's obviously very bright and finds outlets for her talents. Yes. Right now, currently, um, it's it's at the newspaper and running the newspaper. And before it was dressmaking, and before that it was mm -hmm. acting. And she finds different outlets to satisfy herself, whether they're mm -hmm. vocations or avocations. She also finds great comfort in in the man she loves. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I don't know that I have any more or less advice to offer someone wrestling with something so, um, so something that is so deep for both men and women mm -hmm. um, as, as, as not having, being able to have your own biological child. Mm -hmm. um, and we wrestled, by the way, a lot with that. You asked what would our ultimate uh, hopes be for, uh, you know, for, for both Rosemary and Lee. Mm -hmm. We wrestled and wrestled. And I can't say we've avoided, and, I, and when I say we, I mean anyone who's written on the show um, mm -hmm. for, the can, for the Coulters. I can't say we've avoided resolving it. We haven't. We've tried to explore different, um, different uh, aspects of, of 
being biologically childless. I mean, we've also tried to just wait it out a little bit because you're right, things don't always resolve quickly. There, there may be a resolution this season. I'm, I'm hinting a bit at it, but how we resolve it, um, I dare say it's almost still, we could go back and do it again in a very different way. Hopefully the, 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 the path we've chosen for the Coulters is gonna be satisfying for the audience um, because that's one of those issues we just don't take lightly at all. And um, so there was a lot of discussion throughout the season, how it would roll out and how the Canfields would, uh, the Coulters would, uh, would eventually face this. Um, and, I, and I'm, you know, it's, it, it, there's something that comes up and I, I guess I'll probably, I don't know, I won't give it away, but there is something that later on Rosemary will, it, there's a callback to when she first met Joseph and that comes later on. So there's a lot that plays into this. There's, a, the, you know, as I said, the friends in the community, her husband and, and how she's not busied herself, but really um, embraced her passions whatever they are at any particular time. Yeah. Did I use any punctuation and all of that? I don't know, but it's, it's, it's really a, a, um, a powerful issue. And um, if for nothing else, I'm glad we've had the time to explore it yeah. and, um, and not resolve it quickly because it often doesn't as, as people well know. Yeah, I think you guys have done a beautiful job. I mean, especially since there are only 42 minutes to work with. You know, so another yeah, question I'll, is that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, just stay tuned when it that that story is going to pick up some steam ah. later on in the season. Okay. Good. Um, so on that note, uh, with such a long running series and as far into it as we are, do you feel confident introducing dreams and goals for characters that might take? several seasons to resolve, or are you sticking with storylines that are going to be resolved in one season since, you know, renewal is never guaranteed? Right. I've never been one personally to, to be concerned necessarily about, about uh, we've only got 12 episodes and then we may be canceled. Um, mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but at the same time, you want to be cognizant, I think, more of is the audience going to be satisfied? And I think the continual evolution of our characters is something that folks, um, they, might out, they might not always love when they at times bridle against, but it's just, it's life. You have short-term goals and long-term goals. You have goals and story arcs that will last this season and be resolved. You have others that are going to carry on whether the show receives a renewal or not. Right. And when it comes to, individual stories we do have a few that wrap up in an episode or two which which we feel can the compression of that makes them a bit more powerful and a little more emotionally um, compelling so um, we don't worry too much about not being renewed when it comes to what stories are we going to tell just what stories are we going to tell and how do we tell them um, and and they take as long to tell as you know i'm sure I don't know. Do you do you start your books and know where what's going to happen typically and where they're going to go with your yeah, character? Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of authors don't, and a lot of us do I tend to have you know kind of an idea of where it's going. So um, you know, I guess do you, the character do you sometimes. Know? Do you tend to what's know? When you, do you tend to know when you begin where you're going to wind up? I do in the in the way I uh, develop a story. Yes, so. But isn't it fun when that character does something that surprises you? Yep. As, yeah. As though you had nothing to do with it and and suddenly it takes Exactly. A My favorite ones are the little old ladies. They just kind of take off and have a, a mind <laughs> of their own. So that's good. I think yeah. the Hardys are really kind of picking up on the changes in Hope Valley that there's that the industrial age seems to be kind of creeping in, that things are growing and changing. And uh, Mary Jean Stolhansky from San Antonio 
wants to know uh, the radios invented in 1920. So we're getting close. Are we going to see radio broadcasts maybe in Hope Valley? <coughs> Excuse me. We're close. We didn't do radio broadcasts. And, and you're, she's right. Um, that is something that's, that's going to impact the town, but, but not this season. And as far as the industrial age, you know, for those who may be worried that the town is going to transmogrify into something they really don't like, um, and without giving too much away, it, this is a town that's going to remain Hope Valley. I mean, it's part of what the mayor's race was about, and it's part of what this season is about. How do you stem that tide or channel it or encourage it and bring it, bring it forth and, and embrace it in some fashion? Yeah, I think Barbara sort of addressed that, like how how much are the hemlines going to raise in the Roaring Twenties? And, and she yeah. was like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Hope Valley Isn't will remain. Fantastic. We have such a great crew. It's a it was a great conversation. I think everybody just really enjoyed hearing every detail. So um, so you don't think a traffic light is coming either? Cindy Hernandez from New Mexico was like, you might need a traffic light. The, the, tra <laughs> the issue of a traffic light is briefly, but it oh. is briefly addressed in, I think it's the next one, but the whole thing is addressed. Lee Lee becomes uh, very concerned about that. Uh, in oh, the, okay. This is the next episode, episode five. Yeah. Okay. Five and, already. And five. is our Mountie, I know we're a quarter in. Mm. It's crazy. Um, is our Mountie going to get his driving lessons? That will, that's another thing that we just didn't want to do right away, but absolutely. Okay. Uh, there's something coming up about that as well. Okay. All right. When we spoke to Brian Bird last week, he actually got very emotional talking about the upcoming episode. He just felt it was such a moving scene in which Minnie invites Landis to dinner. So can we expect that Hope Valley is going to serve up some of its amazing redemption or what where's where are we headed with Hope Minnie? Hope Valley does serve up some redemption next week and hopefully... Um, even though we know that, uh, it will be a pleasure seeing how that that redemption and that resolution comes around. It was interesting to watch the, the uh, trailer for next week's episode. It really was built all around the Canfields. And I, I thought, well, that's, a, that's an unusual uh, trailer. And I, I guess we did tell that story. So, so in answer, going back to Camille's about stories that last a season or a couple of episodes, I like that. I, I mean, I thought that was nice. And I just love the family. I, I really. Um, Is there anything else you want to pluck out for a little teaser? <laughs> well, Cooper's, <laughs> Cooper's a rascal next week and, and Angela's there and John Serrata was a huge help and, and, oh, I'm getting close to giving it away. So I'm going to stop. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely are looking forward to next week. And I, I oh, completely good. agree about that trailer. That was just the trailer alone was moving and Hardy's lived for that next week on, so it looks very special. But, well, I think we can wrap it up. I just wanted to say a special thank you to Camille today for joining us. It was so great. And we've definitely noticed a trend among the Hardys where I think because we're in season nine, heading into almost a decade of this, that we're all feeling a little nostalgic and we're noticing it amongst everyone, not just us. And so it's been so great to have you here and kind of reminisce and thank, thank you, you so much for all you've done Camille and for the whole team back then that that really paved the way for this amazing community thank you thank, thank you. you thank you so much and I'm just honored actually to be part of this and that um, that we the fans have been included in uh, this entire process and this whole story world and this whole family that it's become so i'm just really honored so thanks well that's how i feel i feel honored it's, it's a blessing to be a part of this show it really is absolutely yeah it's a rare it's a rare thing that we have here and we appreciate every moment we get so so hardies we will see you next sunday for another all new episode we've gotten teases from every angle and it sounds like it's going to be a good one on sunday 87 Central. We'll see you on Hallmark Channel. And of course, we'll see you on Twitter. Don't forget the hashtag Hardies. And uh, we'll see you there. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.